Hello, hello, hello. Now we should be good. Yeah, there we go. All right, hello and welcome. Happy Monday. It is science time. And today we are starting a brand new scientific unit for fifth grade. Our final brand new scientific unit for fifth grade. Oh my gosh, we've already done, th we're starting unit number three. Wow, can you think back? to the beginning of the year when we were talking about living systems and respiratory systems and chlorophyll and digestion and bones and lungs and hearts and all that amazingness. And then we spent the entire winter looking at mixtures and solutions and chemical reactions. And from those kind of zoom ins on systems, we're gonna zoom all the way out. And by all the way out, I mean all the way out and really think about Earth's place in the solar system and how our solar system functions and then how Earth came to be that it can sustain life. And we're also gonna call back to a lot of the work we did in fourth grade around energy and transfer of energy when we're thinking about things like the water cycle and we're thinking about things like heat and climate change. It's gonna be a big one and I'm really excited for it. Um, as usual, what you're going to need, you're going to need your science notebook and something to write with. If you have that in a digital form, that's fine. If you have it in on paper, that's fine. But as with scientific work, all scientific work, we want to make sure that we're keeping all of our scientific notes in one place and we're taking diligent notes as we go. So writing down things like relevant vocabulary words, making observations if we're observing a phenomena, writing down what you see and what you notice, okay? If there's measurement involved, doing some measurement, okay? Um, and then down here are all the I cans today. I can define shadow in a scientific context. I can observe how outdoor shadows change throughout the day, and I can make a claim as to how and why shadows change shape and position. So just to start, let's think about this idea of a shadow. Now I did say in a scientific context because we're not thinking about it in terms of a, oh, a literary context, right? <clears throat> right, of somebody being your shadow or shadowing someone, right? That's kind of following someone around. There's a reason why we refer to someone following you around, like a younger sibling following you around all day as being your shadow. Uh, it's because our shadows follow us around all day. But do they really follow us everywhere? Now, we've seen shadows before, right? I'll demonstrate one here. I got my flashlight on my phone. I got my hand. Zoop. And there it is on the back wall. Okay, there's my, there's my hand's shadow. As I move, the shadow moves. As I move the camera, I move the flashlight, the shadow moves. Okay, so a shadow is in essence showing where light is being blocked. Okay, if we were gonna draw that as a diagram, you might have your light source here. I'll draw it as a flashlight. Here's our light source, okay? Light traveling in a straight line. It gets to, oh, I don't know, a hand. Okay, and these waves of light will just keep going. This wave of light will just keep going, okay? And then let's say, it hits a wall, it'll keep going till it hits that wall, and maybe it's a reflective wall, so it'll reflect back off that wall. Maybe it's not, it'll get absorbed. Maybe it's a black wall, and so all that light will get absorbed. Or maybe it's a white wall, and all that light will reflect back off. And that's why, that's why if, you've ever been, <clears throat> if you've ever been to the snow or seen snow on a really sunny day, it looks like ridiculously brighter than a normal sunny day. It's because all of that light from the sun on a sunny day is reflecting off of that white snow. It's not being absorbed, right? It's different than being out on the yard on the dark asphalt, right? But then these beams of light are traveling the straight line and they come into contact with, in this case, a hand, right? Or maybe in this case, uh, 
a turkey. Gobble, gobble. Okay. Um, and because this turkey, this hand turkey, is not transparent, meaning light is unable to pass through it, it is opaque, right? It will either reflect off or absorb or both to some degree. And behind it, there will be some sort of turkey shaped shadow. Okay, with that black space being where light or less light is falling, right? You're still going to get some sort of, you know, light kind of trickling in some light pollution from the edges, but you're going to see a shadow there, okay? And with shadows, it's all about that light source, right? Okay, if you go into a dark room, if you go into a room, turn off all the lights, it's pitch black at nighttime, are you gonna have a shadow? No, you're not, because there's no light there to make a shadow, right? In a pitch dark room, there's no light there to make a shadow. And sometimes if the light's so low, or it's, you know, if the light's so low, maybe on a cloudy day, or it's, so it's not a direct light, okay? You might not see a shadow there either, because those direct beams of light aren't um, strong enough or direct enough to cast a shadow, okay? On a really cloudy or rainy day, you're not necessarily going to get shadows unless you step somewhere really dark, um, in which case you might, okay? Um, shadows are all about contrast, really. Like, if this, if this is really dark back here, it's really bright back here, and around here, you're going to get a really good shadow, okay? Um, if it's really bright inside and you've got a really bright light coming in, you might not get as much of a shadow because there's like bright inside, bright outside, bright over there, bright over here. And so it's unable to really kind of make a shadow. For instance, there's a light right above my head, right? And here, let's see if I can tilt it up, you can see it. There it is right there. It's off. Why is it off? Because if this bright, bright light was on, it would be throwing all its beams of light straight down and it makes weird shadows on my face while I make these videos. So I have it off for that very reason. So shadows need a light source, okay? And light source. Because it's the absence of that light around it that casts the shadow, okay? If you've got absence of all light, then there's no contrast and there's no shadow, okay? Uh, so one thing that you can actually do at home is take a look at this, go outside. Well, one, you could just grab a flashlight and kind of play around with it inside. The other thing to answer this question, how and why does your shadow change during the day, is you can go outside and you can conduct an experiment. Now, you'll need a couple of things. You'll need some chalk and you'll need a partner. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to go outside and there are some videos on my YouTube channel called Tracking Shadows, some short ones that I made earlier today that you can watch those after this is over if you want to do it yourself at home. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to go outside and you're going to, with a partner, find a place to stand that's out in the sun and you're casting a shadow on the ground. Okay, um, I didn't have a partner for this, so I used our uh, fearless uh, teaching assistant, Gene. Oh, I'm gonna go over here. There he is right there. Look at Gene and all his splendor. And there's my shadow taking the photo. And there's Gene casting a shadow. Okay. And what you'll notice, this was at about 10, 15 in the morning. Okay. So what you'll notice is Gene's shadow, again, cast behind him because the position of the sun, our big bright light source, okay, is kind of in Gene's face. If Gene had eyes, he would need sunglasses. And it's casting that shadow behind him, okay? And what I did, you can see it right there on the bottom, is I took chalk and I traced around, well, his feet aren't on the ground, but I traced around his base. If you were doing this at home, you'd trace around your feet or your shoes, because you want to know exactly where you are standing and you want to keep track of that. Okay, and then you trace as best you can around the shadow and you end up with something that looks like 
this. There's kind of a casting, after I've moved Jean out of the way, of Jean's shadow. And you can see some details there. There's a hand. There's a couple of hands coming down. Uh, there's, there's like a knee right in that middle region. There's his, the witch hat. I left the witch hat on just because it looks fun in a shadow. Okay. Then what I did is I waited. Came back. I taught math. Had an office hour. Ate some lunch. Went back outside. It's about 1245. And we put Jean in the exact same spot and cast another shadow. Now, if we did this in the classroom, for instance, we turned the classroom lights on, we traced our shadows on the floor, we waited two hours, we turned the lights on, we traced shadows on the floor again, would there be any change? No, right? It would look the same. But in the case of the outside, with the sun as our light source, after two observations and two data collections, it looked like this. So in the green there, you can see the second shadow. And again, Jean was in the exact same place as the first observation and the first shadow collection. But what do we notice? about the second shadow. Right? It's got a different, it's definitely oriented in a different way, right? It's way off to the side from where it was the first time. And not only that, it's gotten a little shorter. It doesn't quite go. It's I didn't make right choose the best picture to see this, but it did get a little bit shorter. It does not go as far. If we were doing this in the classroom, we would have brought tape measures out with us to be able to um, capture the length of our shadows and really be mathematical. If you're at home and you want to do this at home with some chalk outside and a partner, I would also recommend bringing a tape measure with you so you can measure the length of your shadows. And in fact, we're going to take a look at that on Thursday. But for now, we can estimate and just say the green shadow is a little bit shorter and it's definitely changed position. Okay, and now let's think about why that might have happened. Hmm. Could it be that Jean somehow shrunk, went through a reverse growth spurt? No. No, he's quite dead. That won't work. Is it perhaps the witch hat got shorter? Maybe it, he like shoved it down on his head? No, no. In this case, it doesn't have to do with Gene, but it has to do with the position of our light source. As we saw, as we saw from um, the flashlight demonstration, okay, if I keep my hand in the same spot, let's see if I can get it. Good, there, there we go. Keep my hand in the same spot and I move the light, what happens to my shadow? I'm not moving my hand, but because the light source is moving, the shadow is moving because the angles of those beams of light are changing. So where they're hitting my hand is changing and that makes my shadow change. This is also true of the sun. Right? The sun doesn't stay in one spot in the sky the whole time. Otherwise, it would be daytime 24 hours a day. And on the other side of the world, it would be nighttime 24 hours a day. And it would get very, very hot on this side and very, very cold on the other side. This is what happens on other planets, by the way, like Venus, for instance. Um, there, I want to say, oh, I don't know the exact numbers, um, but I want to say they only have like one and a half days in their year because the Earth is rotating so slowly. So one side of Venus is in the sun for, you know, like hundreds and hundreds of Earth days at a time. And the other side is completely in the dark for hundreds of hundreds of Earth days at a time. Okay, that's not the case here. We have a 24-hour day with a sunrise and a sunset, thankfully, because we could all get some sleep, right? So it has to do with the positioning of the Earth and the positioning of the sun. As the sun is moving across the sky, sub-question, is the sun the one that's doing the moving? We'll get to that. 
But as the sun is moving across the sky or appearing to move across the sky, it changes the angle of our waves of light that are interacting with solid objects and changing the position of those shadows. Now, we want to go a little deeper with this, and we're going to do so on Thursday when we look at and go into more depth about the, dis the, the relationship between the sun and your shadow by doing some more um, exact and some more precise measuring with our shadows. All right. Um, the exit ticket is on Google Classroom for the tacos. If you're not in the tacos and you're just here for fun, thank you for tuning in. And we will see you next time right here at 1.15 on Thursday for another science lesson. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you soon.